Hi, my name's Tim Clark. I'm a director at Harrison Clark Chartered Surveyors. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the importance of landlords' intentions for a building in dilapidations. As with anything dilapidations, there is often nuance which can affect a tenant's liability to complete works or recompense a landlord for loss. One such factor is the landlord's intentions for the building once the lease has ended. What do they plan to do with the building? Understanding this is important as it helps surveyors to understand whether breaches of the lease have actually led to a loss. This video will set out the ways that three common scenarios can affect dilapidations claims. Most commercial property is owned as an income generating asset and this is the most common situation a landlord will be in. If the landlord plans to relet the building, having first completed necessary works, we need to consider whether works set out in the schedule of dilapidations affect the value of the landlord's reversion, often the market value of the property. To do so, we must consider the age, character and locality of the property. This can often be the most onerous situation for a tenant, as the building will need to be in at least a tenantable condition, which means it's unlikely that the landlord's future actions will supersede the requirement to repair, for example. In some ways, this can make it easier to agree a dilapidation settlement as courts tend to consider works completed by a landlord to be reasonable once they have been completed, sometimes leaving little scope for discussion. There are times, however, when a landlord will declare an intention to relet, omitting an intention to first fully refurbish a property to meet market demand. If this is the case, surveyors should use due caution and make their own inquiries. In this instance, the claim should be treated as though the landlord plans to redevelop. Sometimes a landlord will choose to offer an incoming tenant an enhanced rent-free period to address this repair instead of completing the works themselves. In this instance, it is important for surveyors to understand the terms of a new letting, as liability may be passed to a new tenant. They should also be mindful of normal market incentives, which should be disregarded when calculating dilapidations loss. For example, if it would be normal market practice to offer a three month rent free period and a tenant is given six months instead, normally we would only ex expect the enhanced period, i.e. three months over normal market incentives, to demonstrate the landlord's true loss. Surveyors should always be on the lookout for this. It may be that the landlord has already sought planning consent for change of use, requiring adaptations to the building so it is always worthwhile checking the local authority's website for evidence of a planning application, as this can be a strong guide as to whether the landlord plans to redevelop. In this instance, it is common that a landlord will complete work which will supersede claim items, meaning that it is pointless for a tenant to complete some works if they will be undone by a landlord. For example, the landlord will suffer no loss if a tenant has not decorated the wall they plan to remove anyway. Redevelopment does not always have to mean change of use, in a high-rise office block, for example, the landlord may be gradually refurbishing and upgrading floor plates to meet market demand, maybe by replacing old perimeter heating systems with air conditioning to maximise the footprint of the building. In this instance, sometimes a landlord would have planned to redevelop even if the entire demise was passed back in good condition. In this circumstance, often we find that items included in the schedule of dilapidations will not be value effective and therefore should be removed from a claim. If a landlord plans to sell the building, the dilapidations claim should focus only on items which could affect the sale value. This does not always limit the claim. If a purpose-built office building or industrial unit is sold, a purchaser will often complete repair works prior to reletting and the agreed price may reflect this. It is important that contemporaneous evidence is sought to confirm the extent to which a sale price has been reduced as a result of disrepair as this can help to limit the tenant's exposure to financial damages. If this is not available, a landlord may commission a diminution valuation. A diminution valuation demonstrates theoretical loss, which a court can use to ascertain the level of damages payable. However, this method can be expensive and complicated. As such, it is likely to be to the landlord's benefit to be able to produce contemporaneous evidence of diminution in value. The diminution in value applies a statutory cap to dilapidations claims under Section 18.1 of the Landlord and Tenant Act 1927. 
If a landlord's intention for a building is unclear, it is possible to enter into conditional settlements. One example of this may be that a settlement is made in the usual way, but that if the landlord redevelops within a set time period after the settlement is made, they must reimburse the tenant for some or all of their settlement. Alternatively, a tenant may offer to reimburse the landlord for the actual cost of specific works, even if the exact value of completing these works is not known at the time of the agreement. If the landlord does not complete these works, no settlement will be paid in respect of the non-completed items. Dilapidations is a specialist area of law and you will want to ensure that you have the best representation available, whether as a landlord or tenant. For this reason, you should ensure that your surveyor is a true dilapidation specialist, like our team of specialist dilapidation surveyors at Harrison Clark. If you need advice on your dilapidations obligations, taking into consideration the landlord's plans for the building, our team of surveyors are on hand to provide the advice you need. We can be reached on 023 81 55 and look forward to hearing from you soon.